Why don't we start with some baseball and a degenerate on November 6th. Steve Cohen's deal to purchase the New York Mets became official. And that was billed as the start of a new era for the Mets. The old days of being a jacked up, embarrassing organization were over. Gone are the days of Mr. Met flipping off fans and little kids lighting the manager on fire. Yep, yep. Good days are coming. Everything's going to change. No, it's not. In fact, things obviously are going to get a hell of a lot worse before they get any better at all because this morning the Mets fired their GM, Jared Porter. And it was not part of some house cleaning that Cohen started when he bought that team. Porter was actually part of the new regime. He was supposed to be a part of the solution, not the problem. And no, he was not fired because he had not been active enough in free agency or the trade market. In fact, he was killing it there. No, he got broken off because he was too active on his cell phone and not too active in a clickbait sort of way or addicted to Instagram sort of way. But believe this, dude could not put that phone down. This creep just would not stop. And let me get this out of the way right now. Mets are going to met. And apparently that is the law of the land. It doesn't matter who owns that team or who they hire. This organization is bound and determined to find itself in the middle of one revolting incident after another. Hell, Steve Phillips can't believe a Mets GM would act this badly. So here's the next part of the report. Quote, the woman, a foreign correspondent who had moved to the United States to cover Major League Baseball, said at one point she ignored more than 60 messages from Porter before he sent the final lewd photo. End quote. 60 freaking messages and one lewd photo. Anyway, according to ESPN, Porter, who was working for the Cubs at that time, met the correspondent in an elevator at Yankee Stadium in June of 2016. It was their only in-person meeting. They exchanged business cards. They talked about international baseball prospects. And Porter, like Porter. That's not what they mean when they say everybody should have an elevator pitch at the ready. According to the report, Porter contacted her that afternoon. And before the day was over, he texted her three times asking her out for a drink. Let me jump right in there, too. Friendly piece of advice, three times in the same day, is absurd. Obviously, it's not the most wildly inappropriate thing this creep did in the grand scheme of things. But if you're asking somebody about getting a drink three times in the same day, that's way too many. I guarantee you that person saw the first text about a drink. They don't need to see a second or a third. The reason why they haven't responded is because they don't want to get a drink, not because they didn't see the text or didn't receive the text. It's that simple. According to the woman, at one point, she did agree to meet for a drink because she thought that he was offering himself to be a source for her reporting. She couldn't meet that night, but that did not stop Porter, who sent her an unsolicited selfie with the message, like... Let me answer that question for you, J-Man. No. Unlike. In fact, hate. As with all of this stuff, if you're not getting a hell yes, then it's a hell no. But Porter, being the creep that he is, just kept right on. A few weeks later, he texted her to say, quote, why aren't we hanging out? According to ESPN, quote, Porter asked whether the woman remembered what he looked like and said, quote, you're so pretty. Do you have a boyfriend yet? He sent a selfie and said, it can be me. Again, you aren't hanging out because she doesn't want to hang out. But he wouldn't stop. Somewhere in that exchange, he sent three pics. Quote, including the first of several that would show a man lying on a bed with a bulge in his pants. End quote. Porter. Dude. The hell is wrong with you. You're texting a photo of a bulge in your pants to a reporter. What's going on in your head? She's a professional, and you're sending her that crap. 
When the woman realized the sexual nature of his communications, she stopped returning the texts. And according to the report, this began a pattern of unsolicited messages from Porter with zero responses from the woman, 62 in total. Again, allow me to jump in here and say, if you're sending 62 messages to somebody who is not responding, that is not persistence. That's harassment. Like, I don't even care what the content of the messages are or is. Even if the messages are dong free, and they're not, but even if they were, that's harassment. I mean, you know better, loser. But this guy was not done going full-blown degenerate. In fact, he was just getting started. He's a walking, talking, dateline to catch a predator episode. Get a load of some of the messages he started to fire off. Quote, which picture do you like the most? Quote, want to see more? And then a message that was just a question mark. And then another message that was just a question mark. And then about five hours later, quote, hello, beautiful. About 90 minutes after that, is it too much for you? About two hours later, where did you go? Almost three hours later, at 2.03 a.m., quote, I'm bored. Look, I know there are women listening right now who have received this kind of unwanted harassment. And I'm going to guess there are guys listening right now who have sent this kind of stuff. And the worst part is, the dudes who do this sort of thing are okay doing this sort of thing. And I'm telling you right now, do not think that I'm violating some bro code. Because if you're doing that crap, you're violating a moral code. Stop doing it. Again, don't confuse persistence with harassment. If Porter can't be better than this, at least you can. So here's one summary of some of the messages. Quote, the day after the woman stopped returning his text, Porter wrote, mad at me? Later that day, he sent three more pics. The first was of a World Series ring that he won during his 12 years with the Boston Red Sox, with whom he had gone from intern to pro scouting director and won three championships. The other two were bed pictures of a man's clothed groin, to which he added a message, am I annoying you? End quote. Damn it, Porter. Read the freaking room. You know if you have to ask mad at me and am I annoying you, the answer is yes. She's pissed. You're the most annoying guy ever. And he still wasn't done. Here's yet another summary of the messages. At 2.44 a.m. one day, he texted, quote, I want to see you. And then according to ESPN, quote, seven hours later, he wrote, do you want to see me? Three hours after that, he said, I'm sorry. At 10.59 p.m., I thought we could have some fun. And then on July 23rd, his fourth consecutive day of texting without a response, Porter wrote, I'm a nice guy, you know. Later that day, he said, was it the pictures that made you mad? That night, he sent another selfie. Dude, delete your own number. Throw away your phone. Just reading this crap is infuriating. I can only imagine what it must have been like to actually receive it. And if you feel like you need to send a message which says, I'm a nice guy, you know, you know you're a jerk. And he still wasn't done. Because in August, he texted, I'll be in L.A. this weekend at the best hotel in America. Can you meet me there? Yo, Jack Wagon, what are you doing? She hasn't responded to you in weeks, and you're inviting her to a hotel. Look, man, I don't care if you're at the Four Seasons or a Days In. She doesn't want to see you, ever. But he still wouldn't stop. The following day, he texted her to say, quote, you're missing out. Doubt that, Porter. Yeah, I hope that was worth it, loser, because I know it wasn't. And I know you lost your job because of it. And the fact that I had to talk about your junk or your fake junk makes me want to quit my job, which so happens to be my dream job. You know, sort of like the dream job that you just had, spent your whole life working for, and just threw away. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Porter got his baseball GM mind frame mixed up somehow with his social cues. You know what I'm saying? You know, that whole make the deal at all costs? That whole it's not how many no's, it's how many yeses, and all you need is that one big yes scenario? Yeah, well, that might apply to improving your ball club, 
but socially it makes you a degenerate creep. She's not an assistant GM or an advanced scout. You aren't trying to Jedi mind trick the Brewers into giving you Yelich for a bunch of AAA lifers. You're not building out your farm system. Man, you're ruining and tormenting a poor journalist's life, jackass.